I wanted to share something with you along what you were saying when, when Carl came up uh, in my court case. I learned a bunch of things, too, but I, I wanted to share the big one, which was... Uh, okay. So it's your case, then. This is the one that, that Carl was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, big, big lesson I learned. This will be old news to some of the listeners, but to some of the new people, it will be very valuable. Uh, when you're, cool. you're asking your questions, you've, you've got to have the... Um, the presider, you've got to make sure that that presider knows that you're asking him the questions to obtain a response from the prosecutor. Okay. The, the, the presider has no obligation to answer your questions, at least about their case, maybe about jurisdiction or subject matter jurisdiction, but yep. the questions about the case, like what is the nature of the charges, those have to be directed uh, you have to require that the presider direct get a response from the prosecutor for you, and I and I failed to do that. And I'm, I mean, things went pretty good, but that that was a big one. I wish I had done that. Okay, cool. And another so, yeah. thing I just want to throw in real quick that I think would be valuable. I think it's real important not to underestimate what Kyle was saying about the Canon Code. Uh, I actually did a lot of research on that last week when he brought it up. And it's just like he said, when you go in and read the code, and I don't know about other states, but in my state and in the federal level, they're called um, judicial canons. And sure enough, when you start reading these, you see things in there. It's their religion. It's their code of conduct. They have to support your common law claim. And I'll just give you a quick example. Like in, in the state that I'm in, um, canon three requires impartiality. So they can't favor statutory administrative over common law. They they can't favor the person over the man. Uh, another one, Canon Five, is they have a duty to support the truth. Not not the partial truth that the prosecutor is trying to limit the case to, but the whole truth. And there's a bunch of other ones that are really powerful in here. So yeah. you must have fun to throw going, them back. Yeah, it definitely will. So like Kyle said, you go in there and you say, you know, not only do I believe the whole truth has to come forth to justice, uh, but so don't your canons. Take a look at canon number four. You know, you just put it right out to them. So it is a good idea to read the canon in the, in the state or in the case of federal, you'd read the federal Canons, which are, are really tight. I, I think they're great. <laughs> I love that. That's really funny. Yeah, it's. I mean, you if you're in there, you see how much they ignore them. But I, I wonder. I if you brought it. To, go ahead. No, no, John. Yeah, carry on. Well, I was you just going to say. I, I wonder if you bring it to their attention, just how much they would taper back from ignoring them. I think I, I remember about a year and a half ago before I met Carl, a year and a half, maybe two years ago, when I was asking questions in, in courts. One, okay, the language, I didn't really quite understand the language. But a lot of the time I used to ask questions and then I get no response. So I used to say, well, hang on, don't I have a right to do such and such? And the judge would just look glum at me and then he'd look at the prosecution and the prosecution looked glum. And he looked back at the judge, he looked glum, and they both sat there looking at me, and they're all looking glum. I'm thinking, shit, what the hell are you looking at? But <laughs> well, I think I've, maybe I could have redirected the question a little bit better. <laughs> well, here, here's, here's a tool you could use, assuming you had this, you know, in your area. You go look up the, the canon code or the judicial canons, and you find something that says this. They have a duty to support the truth. Well, uh, sorry, guys, but silence isn't the truth. <laughs> Silence is the opposite of the truth when you when you've got a direct question in front of you. Yeah, I think the other one is uh, I think uh, I'll probably favour because I haven't looked up the canon yet, but I will do in the next week. Uh, the other one is is to say, oh, okay, I'll place it on record. No answer was given. I, I, I noticed if you if you pose your question correctly. Then you can say, oh, uh, an absence of an answer means that this is true then. I'll place it on record that nobody's objected to this point and this is true. That's a 
another way to do it. That's a great way. But I, I notice it's a, a lot of the time, uh, even when I'm letter writing, I tend to um, word my questions in a way because I know everybody knows that if you ask a, a damning question, a public official will not respond to it. So it's almost like a public official, did you really you know, do something against your duties and, and responsibilities and obligations so you know, I can openly sue you? Well, he isn't going to write back and say, yes, I did. <laughs> He's just not going to give you that answer. Right. So writing it in that way is not not probably uh, a good idea. However, um, if you want to word it in such a way to say, hey, I've seen you do this, and that's against your duties and responsibilities um, because you're a public servant, and I'm a member of the public. I'm a man who you should be serving. Now, if you want to carry on with your you know, whatever case or such and such, that's fine. But if you don't want to respond to this, then I'll kind of accept that you're accepting that, you know, you did something wrong. And then we'll just call it quits at that. I'll forgive you your trespasses, you forgive me your mine. And I've noticed that's a lot easier way for them just to say, you know what, we can duck out without actually admitting any guilt and we can just call it quits. That the other way was, I think about more than a year ago, I used to write very aggressive letters. It's, I'm going to sue the hell out of you, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And you just think, well, how can they How can they ever back out? There's no space, there's no wriggle room for them to back out, so the only way is forward. So you think, man, why don't they stop prosecuting? Or well, stop poking with a stick, <laughs> and they might actually, they might actually uh, stop. <laughs> but um, it's just something you learn, I suppose, after time. I think that's a very valuable approach. I put that in most everything I do when I communicate with them. With them. You know, well, I, always do, I always do these other little funny things to try and uh, annoy them in some ways as well. So I would say, oh, so I require a response uh, to confirm that you received this in seven days. <laughs> so they have to just respond. Even if they don't want to respond to the letter, they've still got to respond. <laughs> so that that's always gives them a job. Um, also, uh, what else do I do? Can you repeat that, Bali? I missed that. Oh, so right at the end. So if I've asked a, a kind of a, a nicest question, uh, or I've termed it in a way where it gives them a way just to not to respond and uh, not answer the question, then uh, the next point would be is uh, the other thing that I require of you. I require of you to answer uh, or satisfy these next two questions. So one would be an awkward question, uh, as I would call it. And the second one would be, right, now I also require you to confirm that you've received this notice. So what what they may not answer is the first question, but I, hopefully I've put it in a way that no response means this. But then I actually get a response to say, thank you. Uh, I've had it a few times and they say, we've noticed your letter. That's all it says, nothing else. And then they disappear. And I say, brilliant. Technically, I've won. They felt they've won. Hey, everybody's happy. Yeah, it is kind of comical when you're in there and you're asking them these questions and they all just look at you like, like Kyle says, like somebody fought it. They just sit stand there. Like, <laughs> did you do it? No, did he do it? Who did it? <laughs> yeah. You ever see that, that, that wheel, that spinning wheel that they use to hypnotize people? It's got the, like the rainbow in it, you know, the twist oh, yeah. rainbow. They all go into this like hypnotic trance. <laughs> then, they, then they snap out of it when they want to come at you real quick. <laughs> I, I was saying to the other people who've uh, done it a little bit for a while, and uh, say gone to the desk at the courthouse, then once you first of all you go through this aggressive mode, where you don't you're a petulant child and you don't get what you want and you, you're saying the wrong words, all sorts of stuff. So then you improve your words. But you still lose your temper a little bit if you don't quite get what you want and you've just not quite tightened things down very well. And then, um, But then once you start getting better at that, then the court clerks start thinking, oh, shit, it's him. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're going to have to... He's going to make us start picking envelopes off the floor, leaflets off the walls, <laughs> start making... He's requiring us to do all sorts of shit. <laughs> but then the other thing is, when it's really, really start to get good, that's when you start to no longer lose your temper whatsoever 
be as calm as you like. Then I call it, it's, what I call that is almost like a De Niro phase, where De Niro doesn't start pulling uh, funny faces to show how angry he is like a child and start going, Arr! De Niro does very, very little. And everybody is absolutely scared. It's almost that the 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 opposition's mind fills in the gap. So in Psycho, right. you don't see the murder, you see the knife, and you see the curtain rail and the shower curtain rail all falling down, and your mind fills in the rest, and you're absolutely left petrified. Yeah, that's a great observation. It's a negotiating tool, by the way. If you, if you take courses on negotiating, one of the basic things you learn is the power of silence. Yeah, that's what I noticed when I used to do sales. Um, they used to say, the power of silence. Ask a question and completely stop, uh, especially if somebody you're talking to is actually doing something else. If they're trying to stamp things in front of you and you're trying to have an intelligent conversation with them and they're not listening, first thing you can do is sh cut them dead by uh, stop them stamping stuff. Is just ask them a question and just pause because then... Even if they're not actually listening to you, they just hear this big pause and think, shit, I'm supposed to say something. What did you just say? I better stop what I'm doing. What did you just say? <laughs> then they actually start to engage. <laughs> but definitely right. power of silence is huge. And the other one is yeah. uh, I've done that, made that mistake at the courthouse once before as well, uh, where I've filled in the blank for someone. So I said, oh, so who's this crown? And then uh, the first few times I asked that, I said, oh, is it the Queen? I thought, shit, why have I volunteered it? I want them to confess. I want to convict, convict them with their confession, whereas I volunteered the information and they've just nodded. That's directing a witness. I shouldn't do that. Even when I have a conversation at the desk, I should not do that. That silence is key. You wait for someone to say that information that you're going to convict them with. I suppose that's a, a questioning technique which I had to learn, which, uh, again, another one where I made all the mistakes, but eventually you get better and better at it. And sometimes, for me, I think it was better to learn by writing and improve my questioning skills in writing, very sleek, very simple, whereby the answer, uh, like I say, is generally from courts and councils, you're more likely to get a non-answer. So you skew your question saying, well, that's okay. Um, but, you know, if you think that you're going to, uh, that this did occur and that you've got first-hand knowledge that, you know, above and beyond that I do, then brilliant. Then I'll wait for you to submit that bit of information and then I'll, I'll um, act upon what you say. But a failure to submit that means that that, you know, that didn't occur. And so I'll ignore everything that you said in your last letter. But by the way, you have seven days to notify me that you've confirmed you received the letter. I suppose that's a good example. I remember you teaching me that a long time ago. I always put a time limit on it. Oh, yeah. There's nothing worse in the world when you receive a letter saying, you've got to pay this bill in three days. You're like, oh, shit. Quick, get, grab the checkbook. Oh, my God, I'm busy tomorrow. Oh, my God, I better remember on Tuesday. You start panicking. <laughs> That's why I was thinking, uh, I learned that from courts. They always give you a time frame. <laughs> yeah, very. I think that's very important. I, I hadn't done that before you, you taught me that a few months ago. Now I put a time line, line on it every time. I'm in the process yeah. right now of, um, of writing letters to the clerk who's, who um, allowed my case to be um, refused by a magistrate from a foreign court. Nothing to do with my court. Filled out a piece of paper and said your entire claim is refused. And um, But I had beforehand given the clerk an order to seal my case. And I had also given them a notice of uh, what it would cost him if he trespassed or allowed anyone to trespass on my case. So I'm now in the process of giving him the opportunity to redeem himself uh, before I file a lawsuit. <laughs> Oh, so that's nice of you. <laughs> yeah, it's good like that. That's pretty fair. Maybe I wouldn't have done that. I don't know. <laughs> no, that's pretty cool. But like I say, 
really, along this entire phase of, say, for instance, a court case, it's just uh, a form of contracting along the way. You're, you're defining the, the barriers, the edges of, of this court. So sometimes you have to you know, define it that also benefits you as well. But definitely don't just sit there and be quiet and just hope to God it all disappears. That's a real bad idea. Too many people like that ring up uh, me and Carl all the time saying, oh, I'm in court in about a week or two weeks' time. Well, what the hell have you been doing here all the time? <laughs> oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> That's not good. Well, they get and paralyzed still... by fear. Sorry? They get paralyzed by fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and the thing is, is uh, the more you learn about it, the more you start to realize, oh, there is no fear. My God, they're actually working for me. Who's actually done all the mistakes? Actually, I've done all the mistakes. <laughs> oh my God! I'm, I might as well just get a gun and just shoot myself in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can't. I was, I was saying this before, uh, maybe a week or two, and I was saying, my God, once you understand what a judge does, who would honestly want to do that job? Because I tell you now, I would not want to do that job. <laughs> I, um, I, I think I'd be the horriblest judge ever. I would just make judgments very, very quickly and just look at who was honourable, who was dishonourable. So, uh, you know, it would be interesting if people, you know, picked me and Carl uh, to be a judge. I think people would be genuinely shocked and say, oh, my God, what are these lot doing? You know, they're even worse than the other guys. Well, it's a shit job. It's really hard. <laughs> and if you're going to do it, do it properly, it's, which is not probably uh, always in, in the right way. But, yeah, duty and uh, obligations are the main thing. But, you know... But, all these random free men that are just saying we're not going to pay anything and you know it's fine for the rest of the world to go out and earn a crust and pay for their mortgage and their such and such but just for us we don't believe that money exists and we're not going to pay anything well that ain't right why the hell am i turning up to work for tomorrow for us the whole world should grind to halt in in that scenario and it shouldn't no every man should pay even if it's one pound that's still called paying I wouldn't want to be a judge just for the, uh, depending on what your religion is, but just the the um, the responsibility, you know, on, on the other side. You know, I, yeah. I, I believe these guys are going to face a far more harsh uh, judgment. Uh, oh, yeah. Trial by public is a lot worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And no but sometimes, you know, like, I, you know that case I was telling you about, the one, my crown one? Yeah in August, and you know, all, it was like 39, I lost count of the 39 dirty little tricks that were done on that day, 30, no, sorry, 49, and I lost count after that, there was more than 59, 50 dirty little tricks that were played, but then I always think, you know, could I do that job, no chance, I just couldn't do it, I really just couldn't do it, so, you know, someone's got to do the job, Um, otherwise, you know, the other thing is the council believes they won, so it was printed in the newspaper that they thought they won. But did did they order for me to move my caravan? Nope. So, hey, if that's your v version of winning, ah, fair play. It's a bit weird, but hey, that's <laughs> fine. I don't mind. That's but probably that's a more to bluff you than anything else, wouldn't you think? Yeah, Yeah, I think the other thing is, in reality... Any cases that I've won, have they ever been in the papers? Nope. So what voice actually ever gets out? Just people being prosecuted, that's it. Fear, fear, fear. Yeah, nothing about anyone paying anything with one pound a month or anything like that, nope. Just somebody else has been prosecuted for, for uh, something. And uh, In fact, I don't know if it's the same in America. We On our main channels like BBC One, we have um, programs which have, um, you know, the bailiffs are coming, uh, parking tickets, the council's coming, and all it is is fear, 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 being propaganda, being driven in to, to make people to perform and be scared and do stuff. And at first I used to think, oh, God, this is just annoying. This is just trying to scare people. But then in the other way, I was watching it and thinking, well, hang on. If it does get people to semi-do something, like you say, is it like uh, a state being 
a group of individuals that sort of just come together to secure and protect each other's property. Well, you know what? In every society, in every state, we do have some, you know, iffy people, a few dodgy people that haven't actually ended up in a jail. They're actually still out or they've just been released. So if they're the ones that are watching this stuff and actually believe it, you know, that's probably not a bad thing. But if everybody went around saying, you know what, courts don't exist, nothing exists, it's all fine, let's go around and do some crazy stuff. But I don't think that's the kind of world I'd like to live in. I want the crazy people to at least, uh, you know, uh, hold the reins a little bit and uh, hold the reins back a bit and not be completely out there. Got to have some sort of order. John, you still there? Yeah, I was just thinking of a, a question I wanted to ask you, and I'm, I'm forgetting. It was something I wanted to ask you, too. Oh, I know what it was. Um, in your area, if you if you were in the um, – your equivalent of federal court is Queens Bench, right? Yeah, Queens Bench, yeah. So if you were trying to move your claim in Queens Bench and, the clerk, and you ordered the clerk to seal the case when they didn't seal it, and I'm relating my story to you. And yeah, yeah. as a result of that, some some rogue uh, magistrate from a foreign court, you know, not the Bali court, some other court, mm -hmm. um, took your claim, your entire claim, mailed it back to you, and just put a little note on it and said, refused. It uh, doesn't cl comply with the uh, rules of uh, civil procedure or whatever you know, phony story they make up. Would you... What would I do? What's that? What would I do? Is that what you're going to ask? Yeah. Okay, that's happened to me before, and I think um, some people rang me up at the beginning of the year where they had that a lot, and I said, oh, so it's almost like um, the, the, uh, the clerk is in, in a, a scenario where all they believe is people are coming in to ask stuff. So they're almost in autopilot that they never, they'll look at yours and just think, well, what? This is just usual. We just randomly stamp it, give it him, he throws it out, I stamp it again. That's it. That's just what we do. Now, if, if you did it 900 times, you just wouldn't think. You just do it. But even though you're slightly a little bit different, you just think, well, I don't know. I just stamp it and it goes there and he chucks it out and we stamp it and throw it back out. That's it. So average Joe would always turn away at the desk. You know, they'd, uh, you know, you'd ask something to the clerk or you'd require them and they may not actually figure, figure out what you're saying when you're requiring stuff. They might be new. Who knows? But then it's your chance to explain it and say, right. So, you know, you're a member of the public. Yeah. So you have a duty, of, uh, duty and an obligation. Yeah. So on there it said uh, to seal the case or, you know, give it to a competent judge or whatever you're, you're trying to do. And you say, but you didn't do that, did you? For some reason, you on that day, whether you had a bad day, I don't know, but on that day you didn't do it. So you know what, I'm going to hold you liable. You know, failure for um, carrying out your duties. A dereliction of duty. Let's just call it a dereliction of duty. Or, I can give you seven days to one, to confirm that you receive this letter, or two, uh, give me a date for my hearing or my trial. But on the other side, they'll say, bloody hell, we normally reject all these claims and never get a letter back. I'll have read this letter. Oh, shit, what's this saying? Then we go speak to the duty uh, solicitor who'd say, mm, you're in a bit of trouble here. You know what? I think you need to write back and give them a date. I think we had shitloads. I said uh, at the beginning of the year with people were saying this, and I said, why, why do you presume after one conversation and just give up that easily? Why don't you ever go back and say, look, I require of you? And uh, uh, sometimes, I think it happened to me a few times where somebody said, can you do us a favor? Can you write us a letter? And I said, fine, yeah. And it, that's all I said. It's something simple as that, and then I wrote, and then uh, I'd get a call from them saying, oh, uh, we got a response, and I said, uh, and? And they said, 
I'm, I'm just shocked. We've just got a hearing. They didn't apologize. They didn't do absolutely nothing. All they said was, here you go. Here's your date. Here's your hearing. So, you know, like I was saying, is if you're trying to get them to admit they've done li uh, something li libelous or that they've done something wrong, they're just never going to do it. It's never going to happen. But if you say, you know what, I'll just forgive you. You know, I'm sure you're busy. I'm sure you had so many damn on the pile to reject and stamp, stamp, stamp all of them that you forgot that mine should have been on the other pile that was give me a hearing date. Hey, these things happen. I know you're busy. I'm busy too. But it doesn't matter. You know what? It's not the end of the world. Nobody died. Nobody got killed. I'll give you one last chance. One last chance. you got seven days to correct this. And give me a hearing day. I did each of those ingredients sequentially in letters. So I, I started off very soft. Then I got a little yeah. more stern. Then I got very direct. And the last letter was uh, basically... I'm surprised you had to do that many letters. Normally you just write first and it comes straight away. Well, um, this, I don't know how to explain this. Of course, this is in my head. I, I could be guessing wrong. But there's kind yeah. of a rule of thumb, and I believe it's true. The smaller the state, the more corrupt the court. And so this is the <laughs> smallest state in the country. <laughs> okay. The, the, the corruption is, like, exponential. <laughs> this is your belief, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and ever since I was a kid, I've lived in New England for, for 53 years, this state to be has honest, a reputation. What's that? <laughs> no, I was just going to say, to be honest, like uh, a lot of the time when I kept going back to the courthouse and I kept getting messed around, all it was is I start saying, I stopped writing and I just turn up and I'd say, did you do this? Yeah. No, I always go in there and say, right, I I want to speak to this lady here who wrote me this letter. And they say, oh, no, that's, the, that's this lady and she's busy. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't care if I sit here all day, but I require of you to go to the back and bring that lady out here now. And they're like, oh, shit. And then they walk off. And then about five minutes later, they come, this lady comes out and I say, hey, how's it going? You all right? And I kill her with kindness. <laughs> and then I start saying, right, something here went wrong. Yeah, you need to correct it. I don't quite understand what the hell happened, but I'm requiring you to do it. And then once I think uh, the listings officer refused, she goes, I'm not going to give you a date. I said, yo, yes, you are. And she goes, I'd asked the judge, and the judge uh, said for me to chuck it out. And I said, brilliant. So now you're telling me that the judge trespassed. Let me make a note of it. Which judge was it that trespassed? And she went, no, no, I'm, I'm taking that back. I'd, I, I don't want to say. And I said, what? You're, you're, you're not going to tell me what the name of the judge is? Are you sure he's even a judge? I'm not even sure he's a judge now. Now you're just making it up. Hang on. I should. There's only one way I can actually know that this actually was a judge, I require you to give me the name of that man who's acting on the judge on that day and I'll write to him. And she was like, oh shit, this is going really wrong. And I, and I said, right, okay. Well, what about if I put it a different way? I said, um, I just require you to give me a hearing date. And she said, no, I, I don't think you understand. I literally can't do it. And I said, no, no, perhaps you're not understanding me. I said, right, um, can you go get me an N1 form? And she said, uh, okay. And she just walked off and got me an N1 form, put it on the table, and I started writing a name across the top. And she said, what are you doing? Because I'm making a claim against you. Man, I just asked you twice in front of my friend here. Twice I required you to do two things, and you just didn't listen to me. Totally didn't listen to me. So, you know what? I'm not going to lose my temper. <laughs> I don't need to have a stroke or a heart attack just for you. You're nobody. <laughs> I, you, you're a nice lady and all, but at the end of the day, you're not doing shit for me. You're not benefiting me, so mm, why should I care about you? You don't, clearly don't care about me. Hey, it's not the end of the world. You know what? Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm just crazy, but I'm going to write your name down today. This is your name, right? Because it's written on the letter. Brilliant. There's your name. It goes there. It, there's my claim. And then she walked off and she came back and she goes, okay, I've just spoken to a judge. She came back about 10, 15 minutes later, to be honest. But she did actually go to ask the judge, and then she came back and said, yeah. I'm going to have to give you a date, but she goes, I need to type it, so I'll send it to you in the post. It'll be there, you know, in the next two, three, four days. And I said, don't give me any of your nonsense where it goes into the, the court paperwork and it takes one month to come. And she went, no, 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 honestly, I'll write it tonight and it'll get a stamp on it 
And in a day or two, depending on your post, it will be on your doorstep. And I said, oh, okay, cool. Thank you for that. But remember, if it isn't there by Friday, on Monday I'll be coming back to see you. And then she said, no, I've done it. It'll be done. I said, okay, well, you know what? Thank you very much. I hope, really hope you have a nice weekend. Then I walked off one day later. That <laughs> the, the hearing wow. date came. <laughs> That's a great story but, to hear because I'm, I'm in the midst of that myself, so it's good to hear that. So I think sometimes it, you, you have to play it out in your mind. If I don't hear something that I that I that I uh, that I want to hear, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? And uh, I'd notice one thing is, you'd think that if it was all the corrupt and all sc- kind of scary shit like that, then once I was getting those forms out, that they would just say, you know what, get lost, because. Te- she didn't know where I was going to file it. She's probably saying, yeah, you know what? File it in here, and that one's going to fall off my desk. But I tell you what, she was scared shitless, and she's the listings officer. If she can't pick up a, uh, one of the claims and throw it off the desk and throw it in the shredder, and she was scared, yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty powerful shit. That is. That's, that's great. 